Okay, pay close attention to my intricate plan. I'm gonna start in Copenhagen, walk westwards, and see how far I can get in one go. That's it. So if you're gonna try this, remember that A to B is better than A to pain in the knee. I have not gotten enough movement during the lockdown period, so it's time to make up for it. I've been thinking about doing something similar to this for a while, because I'm curious to see how far I'm able to walk and also how far I'm able to push myself. Because I know this is inevitably going to be pretty painful, uncomfortable and boring. So I'm a bit apprehensive, but uh, also honestly very excited. I'm gonna pack as light as possible so I don't have to carry anything more than I need. I'm bringing my wallet so I can just buy food along the way. Headphones. Power bank. Of course, camera gear. And a camera charger because I own one camera battery. And that's about it. Maybe the most important thing I'm gonna bring, I'm bringing David. Yeah, and also a deodorant. I feel like I'm gonna need that for the train ride back. Yeah, speaking of train rides, I'm not so familiar in the area and I hope I'll end up somewhere near a train station. But that's enough over planning, let's just go for an adventure. I'm gonna start pretty early tomorrow morning and I do not know what to expect. I don't know how far I'm gonna be able to walk or for how long I'm gonna be able to keep going. But let me present a few likely outcomes. My ankle will start hurting after 10 kilometers, I take the first train home, delete this footage and you will never know about it. I managed to get around 30 kilometers and I start feeling like it's time to stop soon and I realized that people run marathons in two hours. So I take the first train home, delete the footage and you'll never know about this. Or I exceed all my expectations and I end up in like Germany or Netherlands. This is enough talk, let's cut to tomorrow and start the walk. 7.45, gonna get a quick snack, pack my things, and then I'm out. Just started tracking. I'm trying to keep a slightly faster pace than I otherwise would. Probably a bad idea, so I'm gonna do this for a while. Taking a headphone break every hour or so to respect my hearing. Seven kilometers in now, feeling good so far. I'm 18 kilometers in. And I have another 10 kilometers until I reach Roskilde, which is the next big city, where I'm gonna have a longer break where I can charge my phone and uh, just sit in a cafe for a little while. This was just a short water break. Rest my feet. It's going well, better than expected. Nineteen point six kilometers, and these these offline milestones they're actually quite accurate from where I started. An actual milestone. Congrats. So I made a quick phone charging stop in uh, Roskilde. I went to a cafe and my instincts took over and I ordered a coffee and a cinnamon roll, which is not the best choice when I'm doing an athletic. No, it's not that athletic, is it? But my nutrition on this trip was just horrible. And after the quick stop, I was again on my way towards unknown territories. I did the last kilometer in 10 minutes, 11 seconds. I'm gonna try to go sub 10 minutes for one kilometer. And that's six kilometers an hour. That's not too bad if I can keep that for, for a decent amount of time. <music> 44.4 kilometers. 
I mean some past marathon distance yeah in like eight hours and 45 minutes or something but it's nonetheless a record 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 since I have never completed a marathon before Listening to David Goggins audiobook was really helpful on this trip. If you don't know who he is, he's a former Navy SEAL, which is a really impressive feat in itself. And he competes in 200 plus kilometer ultra marathons. And he has the world record for the most pull-ups done in a, in a day, which is over 4,000. And he consistently mentions that if you feel like you're done, then you're only 40% there. So you always gotta have a lot more in the tank. So he's really inspirational and motivational. Forty-seven kilometers, and the pain is starting to creep upwards. Not just ankles, but uh, shins. And I started starting to feel it in my thigh as well, or in my hip, left hip. It's a lot less fun now. After the cinnamon roll, I didn't eat anything more on the walk, except for the for a few pieces of this delicious Finnish chocolate that I re recently discovered and I highly recommend it if you can uh, get a hold of it. Initially I said to myself that I wasn't going to eat any more chocolate for the rest of June but I made an exception because it contained a lot of fats and a lot of carbohydrates which are great energy sources so I thought I need it don't I? And I really didn't have much appetite for the rest of the walk. Generally when you walk somewhere you have a destination. But ladies and gentlemen when you transport yourself somewhere, you generally have a destination, not just when you're walking. I can say this so far, it is not motivating knowing that you don't have any destination and the pain is increasing. Feeling of what am I doing is increasing. So if you're going to try this, remember that A to B is better than A to pain in the knee. Over. Okay, I'm 11 and a half hours in with 57.7 kilometers and I'm starting to get pretty tired of this. My ankles are painful and I'm just not... starting to get a little bit defeated. There is a train station 800 meters in one direction and 6 kilometers if I just follow this road. I'm gonna force myself to do the 6 kilometer one, it's gonna take an hour or so. From here it was pretty much just walking, staring into the ground listening to podcast and those last six kilometers i felt like more it felt pretty defeated and done but as Goggin says, you always have a lot more to go in the tank. And in a way I experienced that because I felt like I was completely done. But at the train station, when I had to run, or, or not run, but get up the stairs relatively quick, I realized that I had more power to go. There was more to go in my legs. It was just painful and uncomfortable. It would have been possible to go further. For the last few kilometers, this felt so unnecessary. But already now, after a few days, could I beat that time? What if I next time walked a bit slower? If I had more breaks on the way? If I made a nutritional plan and made, made sure I got more energy? I think I might do something similar again. Yeah, this was way beyond my comfort zone. I'm a big advocate of getting out of it. And in this video on the screen right now, I have a more implementable, can you say that? Implementable way of getting out of your comfort zone for, uh, for a normal daily life. So you should check it out. See ya.